so hinky. The sequel to Dead Island, Dead Island Riptide, is Deep Silver's newest installment in the series, which looks to expand on the story of the previous game with a brand new character in a brand new zombie infested island. So will Riptide whisk you away on a wave of zombie glory, or will you just drown in a sea of depression and disappointment? Let's find out. Dead Island Riptide starts you aboard an aircraft carrier after escaping Benoit, the original Dead Island. Our four original protagonists are joined by a new playable character named John Morgan, and while you think you're safe at first, you quickly find out that the infection has made its way aboard the ship. After destroying the ship, you make your way to Palinoy, seeking refuge only to find out that this island is also plagued by the same infection. And this is where your fight for survival and simultaneous search for the truth behind the virus begins. The story is one we've seen before as far as zombies are concerned, and aesthetically speaking, there's nothing that really sets it apart from the first game. I'll preface the rest of this review by saying that while I did play some of the original, I didn't play all that much, so I'd like to review the mechanics of Riptide as well as how it rates as a sequel. Mechanics-wise, the game is pretty good. We'll start off with the positive. My favorite thing about Dead Island has to be the dismemberment of the zombies. Allowing you to break and cut off limbs is a welcome addition to the genre and makes gameplay more dynamic, especially when you're fighting bigger ones that pack more of a punch. Aesthetically, the game is pretty cool for the most part, and the jungle really does feel stifling, especially with all the Walking Dead covering most of it. The graphics, though unchanged, are still alright, and the sound design isn't bad either. If you'd rather tackle the Undead Horde with your friends, there is drop-in, drop-out co-op, and the game will notify you whenever another player is on the same section, allowing you the choice of whether or not to link up with them. The system works really well, and it made getting into a co-op experience very accessible, even if you had started the campaign on your own. That being said, Dead Island Riptide has a multitude of problems. One of my least favorite things about the game was the respawning zombies. Part of the fun of running through an open world, especially in a zombie game, is feeling like you're clearing out the infection. It's a bit of an annoyance clearing out a part of the island and then running back to the same part to find it reinfested. It's especially annoying when you can physically watch them respawn and end up killing the same zombies over and over again. And then when these same respawning zombies can glitch through walls and hurt you, it becomes even more annoying. What are you doing here? The stamina mechanic makes things interesting as you have to decide how to budget your energy between running and swinging at hordes of flesh-eating monsters, but when you're out of stamina, the whole being knocked on the ground thing, which should be a life-ending punishment, ultimately serves as a reprieve from the damage, allowing you to regain stamina and for some reason prevents you from being attacked further. The weather effects in the game are pretty cool, and I liked how the weather would change on the fly, but this is the first time I've seen weather literally change instantaneously. If I had to pick the thing I liked the least, though, it would be the mechanic of dying. There wasn't really any penalty to dying, so while some parts of the game would probably would have been extremely terrifying, like these sections in underground, dimly lit tunnels, ultimately all of the suspense is sapped from Riptide because of the fact that there's very little penalty for losing your life. You simply pay a few bucks and regenerate. On a larger level though, the game is relatively easy in general because of how ridiculously powerful your fury attacks are. Most of the time you won't need your fury for the smaller zombies, and the big boss zombies can be taken out with ease by simply saving up your fury meter and blowing it when you need it. Difficulty issues could be resolved by turning the difficulty up, but it's worth noting, especially since using your fury meter also restores your health bar. One other weird aspect of the game is weapon mods. Weapon modding for the most part is pretty cool, but sometimes you mod weapons in ways that would seem to make them ineffective. For instance, you can take a perfectly good dagger and for some reason wrap barbed wire around it, and what was once a perfectly good zombie killing tool now seems like it shouldn't work. Although it does, and better somehow. You can take a combat shovel and for some reason wrap flaming rope around it, magical flaming rope that somehow doesn't go out when it gets wet. It would have been cool to see some of the scavenged materials be useful more in situations like this. For instance, if your flame weapons went out when wet, using some of your scavenged lighter fluid to relight them. It would have added an element of realism to a game that felt like it needed it. There's also various silly writing things that stick out. For example, you've been using your fury mode all game, but suddenly when it makes sense in the plot, your character gets freaked out by going into fury mode. Something you've literally been doing repeatedly to save your ass since the game began. Jesus Christ! What's happening to me? From the standpoint of a returning fan, though, the biggest problem with Riptide is that it doesn't feel like there was much of an advancement in the game to warrant a new title. Yes, the new campaign is pretty long, but the gameplay is largely unchanged and the graphics are the same. It feels like very thorough DLC. 
All this being said, in spite of Riptide's flaws, hacking apart zombies is still very satisfying, and doing it is a whole lot of fun, even when they're already dead. <laughs> dead Island Riptide is a game that you'll probably enjoy if you like the first one, but feels like it should have been a half-price add-on as opposed to its own game. There are a lot of problems with the gameplay, but somehow hacking and slashing zombies apart is still relatively enjoyable in spite of the issues. I give Dead Island Riptide 6.5 decapitated zombie heads out of 10. For more video game hilarity, be sure to keep it locked right here at Smosh Games. And for more of me, you can follow me on Twitter at SoHinky or subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SoHinky. I'll see you guys next time.